Well, good morning. I am so glad you chose to join me today at Stepping on Stepping Stones of Faith here on YouTube. And I wanted to take a moment. I've got my pencil, my pad of paper, and my Bible handy. We're going to go on to the next section of verses. But I've always told you, take notes. Take notes and understand what God has wants you to do. And so, here's kind of what I do. I don't know if you can see this from where the camera is. But this is my notes. And I'll read them to you. And this is from, this goes from verse 1 to verse 15. And basically, <clears throat> what I put on here, excuse my, I put Judges chapter 6, Gideon, uh, verses 1 through 10, it was God's proclamation of sin and consequences. And in verse 6 was the calling of the deliverer, calling of Gideon. Verses 7 through 16, or verse uh, Calling for, a, calling for a deliverer in verse 6. So in verse 7 through verse 16, there was calling of Gideon as deliverer. And through uh, verse 13 through 15, Gideon's low self-esteem and how he sees himself viewing upon uh, the, the, the way that the society was there in Israel. So, let's go here. I believe we were on 23... So turn with me, if you will, to Judges chapter 6, verse 23. We're going to continue. Excuse me while I take a drink. I needed something to drink this morning. And I just wanted to tell you that if you wanted to be a partner in ministry with me, you can like and subscribe and share the videos, comment on the videos. Um, and by doing so, you are being a partner in ministry with me. You're getting the Word of God out. You're getting these studies out to people who would probably benefit from them and people we probably don't even know. So it would be great if you would do that for me. But let's go before the Lord in prayer. And we will uh, continue on at the end of the video. I'm going to talk about this book right here. Uh, it's a book that I purchased this week that I'm reading perfect uh, book for the book reviews we're going to be doing. So let's go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We pray that you'd bless our time, bless the time in the Word, minister to, to us through it, help us to glean greater understanding of you as we read and as we study. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we know from the first 15 verses, 16 verses, all of what we talked about in the note-taking thing. God's proclamation of sin and the calling for a deliverer in verses 1 through 10. 7 through 16 was Gideon's calling of to be a deliverer and his, per his viewing of himself, how he sees himself. And we talked about in the last videos how we um, today can view ourselves in the same way. How we talked about how we view ourselves at our worst but God views us at our best. We view ourselves at our worst and our faults and, and the things that we had problems with. God views us as our, our best potential, our, our, our best that we are and best we can be. God views us as that because God sees on the heart, not on the outward appearance or outward circumstances. Okay, so verse 23. Oh, and before we go on there, I should, should point out that prior to this, Gideon had asked the angel of the Lord to stay where he was at. He was going to go. He was going to go prepare an offering, bring it to him, and then or pre pre prepare something for him, bring it to him. The angel of the Lord commanded Gideon to put everything on the rock. He touched the the, the stuff, the the offering with his staff. The fire came out of the rock and consumed everything. We talked about that. How the rock was not consumed, but everything on the rock was, and how God. How he knew that was God. So, let's go here to verse 23. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not be afraid. You will not die. Then Gideon built an altar of the Lord there and called it, The Lord is peace. Even to this day stands the in Ophrah of the Bezerites. That night the Lord said to him, Take a bull from your father's herd, and a second bull, seven years old, tear down the father's Baal altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Now, 
I understand they were weak uh, because of the fact that they worshiped Baal. <clears throat> See, here they were, they were doing evil in the sight of the Lord. All of them were. But their weakness came because they were not trusting God anymore. They were trusting into the idols, the, 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 other, the other gods of the worshipers, the worship of Baal, which if you look at the, the Hebrew word, Greek word for Baal, it's basically they were, they, were, they were worshiping Satan, okay? The word for that can be a derivative of Satan. So they were worshiping Satan. They are worshiping Baal. So, tear all that down. Tear all that down. And he says here, Then build an altar to the Lord your God on top of, the stronghold, on top of this stronghold in an orderly way. Take a second bowl and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the Asherah pole that, that you will cut down. So, here's what God's doing. Okay? God is telling Gideon, the idols that are there, the, the, the idol to Baal, the Asherah pole, all of those things, you're going to use those things. You're going to make an altar, consecrated altar to me using some of those things. He said, you're going to use the wood from the Asherah pole to burn, to build an altar to me. Now, in other words, what's he doing? He's getting rid of it. He's getting rid of the, the idol. He's, and he's consecrating that idol to the Lord. Consecrating the, the offering to the Lord, not the idol. But he's consecrating the idol, to, the offering to the Lord by, by destroying the idol. And that's, that's big because he is, he is destroying the thing that is causing them to be apart from God and, and making it so that they're closer to God using the same things, okay? So, but he's using it in the way God would want him to use it. So, verse 27, So Gideon took ten men from among the slaves and, and did as the Lord told him. But because he was too afraid of the rest of his father's household and the men of the city to do it day by day, he did it at night. Now, this is important. Still, we're looking at verse... We're, we're, we're thinking back to the verses of 13 and 15 where Gideon is still afraid. He understands a little bit what God has got going on for him, knows what God wants to do with him, but yet he's still afraid. So he does everything at night. When everyone's asleep, when, everyone, when no one will know what's going on, he does it at night. When the men of the city got up early in the morning, the altar of Baal was torn down and the Asherah pole beside it was cut down and the second bowl had been offered on the new altar that had been built. So they had seen what was going on. Gideon did this in the middle of the night because he was afraid of what, would, what, he would, what he would experience had he did it in front of everyone. Okay, now, now understand that He's, he's the weakest one, so they probably would have stopped him from doing it if he did it by day. And he probably knew a little bit about that. But, but there was more than that going on. There was, he was afraid of what might happen. Because it said right there, he was afraid of what might happen had he did it during the day. Now, probably if, they, if he said, the Lord has proclaimed this to be torn down, they probably wouldn't have believed him. They, probably, they were probably so far behind, so far away from God, they probably wouldn't have believed him. They probably still would have stopped him. But at the same time, Gideon did it at night so that he would be able to get it done. It says, when they woke in the morning, they saw that it was, saw that it was gone. They said to each other, who has done this? Now, the story takes a twist. Because we don't know yet until, until later on in the story whose idol this was. Okay? We just know there's an idol with an altar built. Or an Asherah pole and an idol there. Okay? But listen to whose it is. Okay? When they had inquired and asked, their, they responded, Gideon, son of Joash, has done this. Then the men of the city said to Joash, Bring out your son, so he may die. For he tore down the altar of Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Joash said to all who stood against him, 
Would you plead for bail? Would you save him? Now, understand that in the commentaries I've read, it doesn't say it here yet, but the idol was Joe Ash's idol. Okay? It was Joe Ash's idol. In the commentaries that I've read, so he was cutting it down, and he took it down, he made a burnt offering. Joe Ash stood up for his son and said, are you going to fight for Baal? Are, 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 are you going to fight for him? Joash said to all who stood against him, who would plead for Baal? Would you save him? Who fights for him? Will you kill by morning? If Baal is a god, then let him fight for himself, for someone has torn down his altar. Therefore, on that day he called him Jerob Baal, saying, let Baal fight, let Baal fight him, for he tore down the altar of Baal. So Joash, in the commentaries I've read, although it doesn't say here, but maybe, maybe, maybe I was reading, thinking of another story, but it doesn't say here that it was Joash's idol, but Joash did stand up for his son. Okay? He did stand up for his son. Now, they all worshipped the, the idol. Joash worshipped the idol as well. Joash was a worshiper of the idol. Even if it wasn't his idol, he was a worshiper of it. And the fact that he stood up for Gideon shows us that there's still a little bit of, of desiring God in his, in his uh, heart. If Baal is a god, let him fight for himself. He didn't fight for himself. So obviously he was a false god, right? So, verse 33. All the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people from the east gathered together, and they crossed over and camped in the valley of Jezreel. The Spirit of the Lord enveloped Gideon. He blew a ram's horned trumpet, and the, Bezer and the Bezerites assembled behind him. He sent messengers throughout all of Manasseh, and they assembled behind him as well. He also sent messengers to Asher, Zebulun, and Nephtali, for, they, for these tribes came to meet him. Gideon said to God, If you will use my hands to save Israel, as you have said, I am placing a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, only, and all of the ground remains dry, then I will know that you will save Israel from, from, with my hands, as you have said. So it happened. He got up the next morning and squeezed the fleece. Enough dew poured out of the fleece to fill a bowl full of water. <clears throat> then Gideon said to God, Do not let your anger burn against me, as I speak only with the fleece, as I speak only one more time. Please let me perform a test. If the fleece, one more time, uh, let's see, if the fleece be the only thing dry and let the, let the dew be on the, all the ground so that, so God did this during the night. Only the fleece was dry and the dew was wet on the ground. Now, we have to understand something, the mindset of Gideon. Now, he's, he's getting into this this is the end of verse six, or chapter 6. But he's getting into this whole mindset of understanding that God is calling him to deliver Israel. He is, sees, him as a, uh, sees him as a mighty warrior, although Gideon feels very low, very weak, very, very self, his self-esteem self is terrible. Uh, he's he, he's he's fearful. All of these things. He's getting into the. He's he's asking God for tests, and 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 we can see ourselves in this. How many times has God asked us to do something, or asked me to do something, or asked you to do something? And you say, God, if if this is Your will, confirm it. And we should do those things. And then God confirms it. And then oh well, okay, You confirmed it. So if it's really Your will, then then send this person to tell me. Okay, we have, we have done this, and I've done this personally as well. We have done this kind of stuff. Uh, same as Gideon. Why? Because we, are, we feel ourselves as, as, as frail. We view ourselves as 
people who uh, are very low who can who, who, why would God use me that's that's a lot of what how people view themselves and when when we view ourselves as failures when we view ourselves in the negativity of, of our of our daily life then we we view ourselves in that way and and we we go to go with things like why would God use me why would God do this why would God we do that don't say you don't because I know you do because I do the same thing God will do that God does that now that's just my timer now understand that as we close this Gideon although all this is ha has happened in chapter 6 Gideon is beginning to see who God wants him to be the, the, the transformation is happening but it has to come by spending time with God He's, he, he, he asked God show me this show me this show me this. and God did so faith is beginning to rise in Gideon. So when God does things in your life and shows you, does faith begin to rise in your life? Does faith begin to rise in your life? I hope it does. So that's my challenge for you today. Is God doing something? And if He is doing something, is faith rising in your life? You need to think about that. So, till next time, Pastor Josh, you're watching Stepping Stones of Faith. God bless.